so lovely to have you here. This I'm very interested to hear about your story and how you kind of got into this line of work. Oh, so oh. I don't know, why don't you, why don't we start there? Why don't you just like give everyone a, a little introduction, tell people what you do, and then we can kind of go into how you got there. Sure, sure. Um, well, I'm Selena Beasley, and I am a makeup coach. And so I, I teach women in online business how to do their makeup. And my specialty is camera. Um, since video has now become, I mean, this is perfect example. Video is now part of our lives. It's part of how we connect with our audiences and our followers. And it's a powerful medium that can be uh, an art in itself to learn how to reach through that screen and really grab the heart of your listener. Um, so my first career, I was a stage performer. So I was a singer for years and years and I never did my makeup unless I was on stage mm -hmm. and I would only, most of the time someone would do it for me. So if I tried to do it myself, it was, a t it was not pretty. So when, you know, when I started having kids, I came home and um, started working from home. I would coordinate, you know, live bands and coordinate singers and bands. And, and I found myself starting to work with the singers on their stage appearance, on their, on their stage performance. And the, I, I was constantly coming back to things like you know, dress and style and the way that they carry themselves. And I would tell them, you know, again and again, you want to make sure that your appearance, you know, what you're, what you're communicating, the, the nonverbal, it, it reinforces your message. It reinforces your, you know, whatever it is you're singing about, whatever it is you're talking about. Cause I would use, I would work with, um, with, uh, speakers as well. And so during the lockdown, 2020 <laughs> when nobody was leaving the house and if they were they were wearing a mask on their face yeah. I was learning how to do makeup this was like sort of my version of adult coloring I was like this is the time you know what there's no live performance happening like this is one area where I know that I'm weak this is you know but I know that just a little change can make a big difference and so I started teaching myself I'm self-taught Mm -hmm. And I started asking, I love this. This is so cool. You know, you, you know, like it's born out of something that you, that you noticed. It wasn't like a natural ability. You taught yourself because you realized that it was needed. I know. I really, it was like the one piece of, um, live performance that I was like, man, if we can learn how to dial that in, you know, then I feel like it could just take your presence over the top. Yeah. And when I, came, you know, when I came home, started teaching myself, I called all my girlfriends and I was like, can you let me give you a makeup lesson over zoom? And so we would, we would do virtual like makeup lessons and I would teach them, you know, what I was learning. And it was awful. It was pitiful. Like I've had to like <laughs> go back. And, like, at, least you, at least you can admit that. <laughs> I've had to go back and apologize. And be like, I'm sorry. Everything I taught you, just ignore that. Just ignore that whole thing. <laughs> um, but the thing that I kept recognizing was I would meet women, you know, women, professional women who felt that they had, um, they were successful. They were accomplished. They had realized some success in their field and then the world went virtual and then it never quite really went back. Mm -hmm. And this whole video piece put some very, very confident women kind of feeling a little bit like taking a step back and feeling a little bit shy and, and they were no less accomplished or successful or, you know, well-spoken, but there's something about the camera that is, that can be very daunting. And I read an article during the lockdown um, and I haven't been able to find it again. So if you, but it made so much sense to me. So if you know of it, you're gonna have to send it to me. But it was talking about the psychological effect of seeing yourself on film like this and how, what it does, the impact that it has on our brain is as if you walked into an elevator 
and turned and faced everybody instead of facing the front door, which would automatically, we were in an awkward, like, it's like oh, something's yeah. back, something's, something's not as it should be. And so Interesting. Yeah. similar, when we all went virtual, mm -hmm. it's not natural, like we're not naturally, maybe the next generation will be because this is just part of our world, but for our generation and those of us that the, the virtual hybrid situation was not, it, it wasn't a part of how we operated. Mm -hmm. It feels very counterintuitive to be looking at myself. Oh, and yeah. you, it feels and super weird. <laughs> totally, I haven't got used to it. It has changed the way we make conversation. It has changed. It's, it's changed everything. I, I can't wait to read. I'm a psych enthusiast. I'm a psych. I read psych journals for fun. Like I just, it's, it's a nerd. It's a thing I'm nerdy about, but to, but I, as I was teaching these lessons and getting better at <laughs> learning how to do my makeup and actually be able to teach and train other women how to do it, I sort of, I sort of married my stage experience with um, doing your makeup for the camera because being under lights and in front of a camera, it's a totally different visual demand than just what you see in the mirror the right. camera picks things that you might look great in the mirror and be like okay i'm doing well and then you turn on your camera mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the dark circles are more pronounced the what you look washed out you look and I, and I just remember when i was learning you know how to do makeup for the camera uh, just realizing that that seeing that difference in yourself that alone can be very discouraging. You know, when you turn on the camera and you're like, why do I look so tired? Why do I look? Yeah. You pick yourself apart. For sure. Yes. Yes, I know. I said to my husband, I did my first, after the first video, I was like, I didn't really, like when I, I'm very expressive. I'm like, I need to learn how to be expressive without raising my eyebrows. I know. Because, because I don't have wrinkles. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't realize that was there. I know, I know. And, and you know, the thing is, is if we're not comfortable with this yeah. very uncomfortable setting we find ourselves in, then we're going to hesitate to be thinking about the other person and how we can reach them yeah. and how we can translate our message in a way that they understand and, and in a way that they gravitate to. So I, yes, I'm a makeup coach, but I'm always bringing the point home like this, everything, you know, we do choosing colors and, and technique and application and all of that is to attract your audience to your message. We did not go into business to win a beauty pageant. We would have entered a beauty pageant. That's yeah. it's more than makeup for sure. Do you, yeah. find, see, do you find, so I don't, you know, wear that much makeup. I'm like, you know, I wear like a little bit of, um, more, you know, tinted moisturizer, mascara, and then a bit of lip, whatever, gloss mm -hmm. thing. Um, but when I'm doing it, and like when I go out, it's very meditative for me. So it kind of like puts me in the right, it kind of settles me, you know, ready for what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to go out or whether I'm going to go on camera. It's, it's really interesting. Do you find that? Do you find yeah. it meditative? And if, if you, one of the first like homework assignments I give my clients is if you do two videos, okay? Mm -hmm. The one where you just, you kind of show up as is, as you would every other time mm -hmm. you would turn on your camera. And then the second video, I say, you know, do use some of the techniques that we've learned uh -huh. and, you know, apply this color or that and notice the difference in your perceived energy level. Mm -hmm. Notice the diff. There's something that happens to your vocal inflection. Mm -hmm. There's some. It, it, it takes your all your your energy. It takes it up a notch. Yeah. And there's just something about taking that. It it becomes a practice of self care. Yeah. It does become like you were saying it very meditative. That mm -hmm. ten minutes, you know, when I'm doing my makeup, like right before we came on together today, you know, I was playing with some different colors different things I wanted to show you and thinking about our time together and thinking about you and thinking about who would be you know listening to us today and it's almost that like 
the practice of it is almost a little bit of that like important white space we hear about and yeah. like oh yeah taking a yeah to breathe and and so I was thinking about it I, I may write something about this because it's something I'm chewing on lately but you know I don't know if you were like this as a little girl but when I was a little girl it, the greatest pleasure for me was raiding my mother's vanity yeah. absolutely her, her makeup yes. I did it with my auntie Jean I remember like discovering her little vanity and a yes. blue eyeshadow and everything oh <laughs> yeah and it was and my favorite picture of my daughter, I have a 12 year old daughter, she uh, got into some purple glitter number something or other, and she just painted her whole face this purple glitter, and she thought she was gorgeous. And, and I'm thinking the other day, and I was like, at what point did, at what point does that stop being something that we enjoy? And it starts being this like, oh, I've got to do my makeup thing, you know? And we rush through it or we don't do it at all. And, Again, we're not doing this to win anybody's approval. Yeah. That, that's not what the point of this is. The point of makeup is not to, and I feel like makeup, the very term, I wish someone would come up with a better name for it because <laughs> makeup yeah. sounds like you're making up for some deficiency mm -hmm. or some. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. It's so true. How yeah. interesting. And that is not the intent of uh, my, my dear friend, she's a, she's a stylist. She goes, this is your war paint. This is, this is. <laughs> yeah, like, it's true. You're getting ready. No, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, and what you were saying a minute ago, I think that, you know, when, when you become a mom and things shift and you kind of become low on the list, you know, okay. it just, you know, I, you kind of forget that. And I definitely, I mean, I don't know for how long, you know, I just, when I had my jewelry business, I, I employed a, a, a new girl and she was, she was joking one day, it was like a year and she was like, I thought you only owned yoga pants, you know, and I'd literally just go to work every day with yoga pants, no makeup. And because I just, I mean, it's, it was like a, just an extra thing that I know. you didn't need. But when you give it the time, um, you know, I don't wear it every day, mm -hmm. but when I'm going to do something like this, it does, it does prepare you. It does make you feel better. Yes. And it, you know, whether it's all in your head, you know, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't it, matter what it is or what the vehicle is to make you feel more confident. Yes. You just do the thing. So whether it's like meditating and journaling and putting on your makeup and mm -hmm. wearing something you feel good, you know, like all those things mm -hmm. together help you feel more confident. And then you, you know, give that, that energy off and you yes. um, do your best work for sure. And you said, I think you used a really key word in it prepares you and your, your audience, when you turn that camera on it, that is what that message is unspoken. Like she was prepared for me. She, cause turning on your camera, the difference between turning on your camera and and you're just, you know, in the yoga pants and you've got the top knot and you've got the dark circles. It looks like I didn't, I wasn't prepared. You've caught me on the fly or, yeah. you, or it can, I'm saying it can communicate that. And, and I encourage my clients, I encourage my followers, like you want to, you want to look the part right. of the authority in an authentic way, not something that you're, we're not trying to be something yeah. that we're not, but we want to look at the authority. I want you to turn on your camera and I want you to see me and subconsciously to register. She prepared for me today. She's, well, she's ready. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, you, you're, you're a reflection of your brand, right? Yes. So it's like the quality. So if your brand is, you know, I, this, I don't wear makeup, I'm so, I just turn up as I am, then that's your brand that perfectly matches up, right? Yeah. But yes. then if it, you know, so it, it's whatever you are and whoever yeah. you are, but I think that it can definitely, yeah, for sure. No, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Super cool. So I just want to go back because you just like slipped in there, but it sounds very interesting and I want to know a bit more about it. I want to come back to the makeup, but tell me a little bit more about you being a performer. Oh, <laughs> what kind of music? I'm I, so I'm fascinated. I would say, um, yeah, I was a touring background singer 
wow. from the time I was in my early 20s and my husband was a guitarist. He started out in Nashville and played country for country bands. And then we started, um, once after we got married, we were a package deal and we started signing with different artists kind of in the inspiration circuit. Uh -huh. And we traveled together and I sang background and he, you know, how cool is that? Years. And then I bet you have so many stories about, yeah. That was such a rich time. And then we had babies. I have four kids now. And that, so having to kind of navigate, I didn't want to raise my kids on a bus. You know, I didn't want to like, yeah. you know, I don't want to do that. So, um, you know, having to, to kind of reinvent our, our passion for music and performance and entertainment and inspiring people, you know, again, it all comes back to the message, you know, that message that we, uh, music was our medium, you know, to share our message and what we were passionate about. And, you know, now I teach people how to use color and makeup to attract to their message. So I love that. That's so cool. <laughs> Very cool, my darling. Well, um, let me see. I don't want to like take a because I want you to do your little mini training. Yeah, as well. I I have something fun, um, and this is part of a broader trip. But I'd love for anybody who's watching this to be able to like walk away, go to your bathroom, and with whatever you have, be able to like do something different with it that could influence your camera presence. Um, so I teach a workshop called the five must have colors. And I find that the, the women in business, especially and busy moms, the number one thing I hear is I, I just don't have time. I, I don't have time to do my makeup, which is partially true. Yes. But I think that with all of the different products and color choices, the whole idea is very, it just can be very overwhelming. Oh yeah. There are, 18 decillion color combinations in the world. That's 18 with 33 zeros behind it. And my, I say, let's, you know what? Let's just start with five. Let's just start with five colors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, you know, how do you wear those colors best and what sort of difference can they make for you? And I say, you can get camera ready in five minutes if you know how to choose and apply these five. Okay. Must must awesome. have color. So the first, first one, I always start with blush. So blush is just kind of goes on the apples of your cheeks and on your cheekbone here. And it is the whole purpose of blush is to wake up your face. It's to brighten your appearance. And the shade of blush that you should wear is what sh is what closely what is the closest match to your naturally flushed look so think like after workout you know that sort of pink or coral look mm -hmm. um, or if you have you know a bronze toned skin kind of that copper look yeah. that that's the shade you want to match so your most natural flush tone is your guide for finding the right shade of blush so you find someone that makes you embarrassed so you flush yes! and you copy that <laughs> Sweet. Yes. Got it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> or next time, you know, you're coming in from a workout, look in the mirror, take a picture of yourself. <laughs> and, and, you know, when you go to the makeup counter, this is the color I need. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and so the second must have color is your lip color. So general rule of thumb is the best lipstick shade. First of all, I should go back and preface this. The number one makeup rule is there really are no rules. Like if you love the color red and you just, you know, it's just red or bust, go with red. Like if that makes you feel confident, sister, wear it. Like th this, these are guidelines. What I'm offering you right now are guidelines. So when it comes to lipstick, you have a, you have a, beautiful opportunity to express your personality, your style, your mood. Um, but general rule of thumb, you want to wear a lipstick that is one to two shades deeper than your natural lip color. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of a starting point, whether again, pink, berry, plum, red, 
Okay. But as I've been talking with my hands, I know you've probably seen no, this. I, know. I just thought. Yeah, I was going to show you. Well, I was preparing for this is what I want you to do when you hang up this call. Okay. Um, so I keep a camera, what I call my, my, my go live lipstick. I keep it on my desk. Um, it's darker than I would probably wear to go to my, my kid's school or to the supermarket. It's a little, it's a little intense, but it's perfect for camera. And the way to find your perfect shade for the camera is you want to select a color that is the highest contrast. That means that it stands out the most against your skin. And if you're thinking like, hey, what, what does that mean? So, okay. These are five of my favorite shades. Okay. So say after, you know, say you, you have a collection of lipsticks and you're like, which one is best for the camera? I want you to create a stripe of, you know, each of the colors you like on your arm, or if you're, if you're going shopping, you can do this at the department store, you know, just kind of create a little stripe. And then, oh, we're talking on my phone, so I can't take my phone, but you take your phone and you snap a picture, and then you turn that picture to black and white. And it's, it's gonna show which colors have the highest contrast. Try it after we hang up. Ooh, this is The color that has the highest, so when I took, when I took, um, I did it right before this call, the black and white picture shows that this shade right here has the highest contrast against my skin. It might look different on your skin. And that's one of the beautiful things about it is, is it's individual to you. So line up the three to five favorite colors, take a picture, turn it to black and white. The one that stands out is the highest contrast. That's the one you wanna reach for when you're gonna turn your camera on. And even if it seems like, if it seems too dark, mm -hmm. if it seems too intense, you can even apply it with your finger and kind of get a little bit more of like a sheer application on it. If you okay. feel like, oh, that's just too I, much. I, 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 lipstick makes me nervous. It makes I just, a lot of people yeah, nervous. Yeah. It makes yeah. a lot of people so nervous. Let so. me ask you, what does this, I mean, I guess you've got, so there's like matte lipstick that is, you know, the, the shiny lipstick and also like i use like a lip tint mm -hmm. um because i think i was i was explaining to you that i have like yeah. i had an accident when i was yeah. little and so i don't and like the edge of my lip is kind of missing so if i wear a lipstick it kind of it sounds ridiculous but it kind of like kind of drips out of no like lip. it kind of like so just, and, well it's like i don't have a straight line around here it kind of dips mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and so if i wore like a real dark lipstick it would just look like I can't do a straight line and it wouldn't stay in that position. It would look like my son did it, who's fine. Which... <laughs> and there are I mean, tricks, you know. you know, most most people don't have even, most people have sort of unevenness when it comes to their features, like their lips. So it's not uncommon to have to sort of create, you know, kind of, create a symmetry that wasn't otherwise okay 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 <laughs> so what do you think about those three kind of you know the lip tint the you know oh, oh you brought up an interesting point so the one that is matte you want to have a matte finish on camera and that's one of the uh one of the things we have to contend with with the camera is that light you know we all want to be well lit you know when we're on camera but Anything shiny, shimmer, you know, even like our eyeshadows or, you know, um, highlighter on camera, the light, it scatters the light instead of the light, you know, us being the focal yeah. light, it just, yeah, it scatters it. So any product, lipstick, foundation, you know, anything, I say choose a matte. I love that glowy, dewy look. Um, I love shine, you know, I yeah. love lip gloss, but it, but for camera, camera, it doesn't translate as well for it's camera. so interesting, isn't it? Yeah. When I yeah. do a brand photo shoot, shoots with people, I always say, you know, bring a, a weight, like, like double the amount of tops because in person or in the mirror, you know, you, it looks great. And then when you get it on camera, 
it just looks different. And that just happened to somebody mm -hmm. that I know. It just happened. And it's like, oh, damn, you know, it yeah. doesn't look anywhere near as good. So, I, yeah, that totally makes sense. I'm like, look, keep looking at my lips going, it's too light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna do this. It's fine. Carry on. <laughs> you are lovely. And again, these are just general guidelines. Yeah, no, you no, it's awesome, of course. Comfortable. You have got to feel like not, you know, if too much makeup or not enough makeup, you will be so so you'll be conscious of you when everything that we do is to be serving the other person. Not, you know, and to thinking about them and you know, just getting into their story. And if we're thinking about us, then that yeah. just defeats the purpose. It totally yeah. is the purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what? This is what I really love about doing like live like this or yeah. the groups that, you know, I started doing. Because, you know, when you record, when you record, you can re-record and you can analyze and you can do all this whereas live you just get on with it and that's what I'm really loving this is why I'm pretty you know wanting to do this uh, more as well and feeling more and the more you do it obviously you get more comfortable but yes and then you, you but if you begin confident by getting everything yes. in, in, you know you, you feel um, you know getting everything as good as you you know, can do to make yourself feel as, as confident as possible to begin it. It's like, I always, I always joke, my mom always carries like a hairbrush in her, in her bag. And she's always like, when we're out brushing it, I'm like, I'll brush my hair before I leave the house. And that's a lot. I don't care. If I, if I look so right before I left, everyone else can deal with it. I don't mm -hmm. care. You know, like, it's just, I just want to get on with it, you know? So I, t yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So let's carry on. So we, we're, are we on the, are we still on the lips or have we okay. completed the lips? So we started, we started must have color number one is your cheeks. Yeah. Your cheek color. Cheeks. Must have, must have number, uh, color number two is your lip color. Okay. And I teach, I have a free lipstick masterclass that if you just go to my website, it's Amazing. a seven minute little mini workshop. So if you want, you know, I could, we could put that link in. Yes, um, please. Absolutely. I will. Yes. We'll put all your stuff. You can learn, learn oh, you know, all you want to know about lipstick. Um, but the final three colors are actually eyeshadows. Oh. So color three, four, and five are all for your eyes. Okay. Okay. Um, the first one, I'm going to give you an example here. Can you see this? Yep. Okay. This, this black is just, that's in there because if I want to use it as an eyeliner, but we're not going to talk about that today. So don't get scared. Don't get scared of black eyeshadow. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about this shade right here, this neutral. Mm, I love, um, I call it base shade this shade right here is notice it's darker this is going to kind of give a little bit more pop and dimension to my eyes this is my accent color and then this light neutral this is my highlight color and the first one i can apply all over my lid okay and my accent shade again it's an accent so we only use you know a little bit goes a long way so i'll take my my eye blender brush mm -hmm. with my accent shade. And I might just, you'll notice I kind of did it today. I'll just put it in the corners okay. of my eye. Um, just right, right up to my, you know, my, the crease of my eye. And notice it just creates a little more dimension. Mm -hmm. Not like mm -hmm. anything crazy. This is just a little hot fudge color. So it's not like, you know, but it does, it adds dimension. And finally my highlight, highlight color my lightest color i'll apply that kind of right underneath my brow bone oh, i see i didn't know i thought you were going to say here i thought you were going to say apply it there okay. as well you can apply it in the corner of my eye but the whole purpose of a highlight shade is to create lift we want mm. to draw the eye of our viewer up because it it Per, it, the perceived energy level goes up. Mm -hmm. If we're wearing really heavy, dark colors down here, it draws their eye down. Mm. And so just that little bit of highlight underneath your brow bone. So well, no matter what you're curating by way of eyeshadow palette, you want just a medium tone, a pop of color, and a highlight. Okay. Three shades, and I mean, you're, you're it. Well That's it. You're done. Job done. Amazing.
And yeah, yeah. So when people are, you know, when you're just starting out, like I help my clients, like let's put together that the five must have colors that work for you. Like, cause yeah, it's going to be different tone. for everyone, right? It's different for, for everyone. Your eye color, your skin tone, your undertone. That's where it gets the more nuanced. Yeah. But five colors, you can rock those colors day, night, camera. Mm -hmm. You can, and then once you get familiar with, you know, how to choose your colors and how to apply them, then shopping for makeup and applying your makeup becomes fun again. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, I gotta yeah. do this thing again. Well, it, you, know? you know, you said at the beginning, it, it's overwhelming. Like, I feel like, you know, it's like in, you know, in a candy shop when there's just like so many options. Are we, you know, like in business, you know, we know that, you know, too many options is not a good thing, right? Yes. And we just want like three, pick one of these three and we're yeah. good, or five or whatever it is. And that's how I feel. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a lot. So this is so cool. This is yeah. great that you help people figure it out, you know, especially for them. That's it. Cause I have like an olive kind of skinish. Mm -hmm. And so if I put pink here, I just look like it just, I don't know. I look like a doll or something. It just doesn't work. It just, yeah. Um, but I'm going to, okay, this is really interesting. Do you have, because, you know, if, you, if I went into like Sephora or Ulta, now I'd be like, I don't know. What, I want a palette. You know, I see these palettes all the time, but I'm like, I don't know which one. Yeah. Actually, two questions. Do you have a couple of favorite, you know, lines? And is, this, is eyeshadow the same as the lip? regarding the light and the sparkle kind of thing. Yes. So it's more matte on the eye. So like save the sparkle for when you're going out yes. once yes. a year. Like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to answer your question. So I was going to pull, I don't want to get the name of names of these brands wrong. Oh yeah. But I have, um, I have a product Pinterest board. Um, so if you follow me on Pinterest, Oh, okay. I pin and most of the products that I pin are best for camera. Cause that's my specialty. But, um, I, the thing with palettes, I want to answer your palette question. Yeah. How many times have you bought a palette and you use two well, of the colors? That's it, right? You, oh, I've, like that's the only kind of palettes I've bought. Yes. Um, there are a few brands that I have found that have um, refillable palettes. They have um, magnetic, like you can purchase these colors individually. So say you found your, your three, mm -hmm you know, your base, your accent, your highlight shade, um, the palette is magnetic. And so you can just, you know, so assemble, you build your own. You build your, your own um, and there are, there are, I have really only found a few brands that offer that. Um, the other one, the other name is escaping me, but it's on my Pinterest yeah. board. Um, okay. I, for, I'm such a less is more, I mean, look at this, like this small bag, this is my camera collection. This fits this in this little. This is what we need because, like, you know, there's a lot of people here that just not like, you know, makeup is literally like 156 on the list. I know. So if we we can just make it as easy as possible oh. and and have oh. like three like a small bag. Like if you if you held up a giant bag full of stuff, I'd be like, oh, I don't know. That, no. that might you, can, you cannot use all of that. Yeah. I mean. If you even, even makeup artists, if you notice, they keep a very small collection because yeah, makeup yeah. is like, makeup are like, that's like the items in your refrigerator. It expires. You can't just pile it on yeah. and, and keep exactly. using it year after year. It expires. And then it's like, you can't use it fast enough to have a, a mess. Just, just that, no, that's so true. I just, how, like, do, does it, I'm like, how long is my, I know it has, well, once it's open, you know, once you open, you know, depending on the product, the clock starts ticking. Yeah. So take your mascara, for example, every three months you want to replace it. And it's because, I mean, think about this, you're getting close to these, these um, mucous membranes, you know, and, and these products can collect yeah. bacteria. Yeah. You know, you don't, don't want to keep on applying that yeah. to your face. So I say that to say large, Large uh, collections are unsustainable, impractical, mm, and, okay. and really, really not healthy. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. That is so good. I'm sure everyone watching will be very relieved. <laughs> this 
the same this, as me. This is one of the things, this, one of the things I love about what I do is that, especially if you're raising children, if you're in business, just when you think you've got something down, figure it out, be it oh, yeah. your child's routine, you know, their sleep routine or your marketing approach, it changes. Yeah. And, and, and you're just like, I had just got, I just got it down. And then it switches. And now it's mm -hmm. the thing I love about, you know, this is your colors will always be your colors. Mm -hmm. The best application for you is never going to change barring you have dental surgery and the f shape of your face changes or, you know, it's just, but these things, once you, you can literally get your look, I say, get your look on lock mm -hmm. and you, this, it's just a skill. Amazing. This is not something that takes like crazy artistic yeah. ability. And once you have it, you can leverage that again and again and wow. again. And just part, it's just part of your routine. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I love it. I love it. That, that's awesome. This is exciting. Okay, you're inspiring me. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to. Uh, yeah, I'm a gonna have to throw half my makeup away. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. And then I will go. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I, Fantastic. Thank you so much oh. for sharing all, all that. It's funny because it's one of those things. You just make it everywhere, right? But unless it's like your thing. You know, there's some people that just love makeup and it's their thing and they, you know, they've always been, they've always applied it every day. But like for people like me, which I, I feel like it's the majority, it's like, you know, I wear makeup to go out, uh -huh. which is very soft. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I wear very basic makeup, you know, day to day, um, but not every day. You know, like it depends what I'm going to be doing. If I'm getting on, you know, if I'm getting on the camera, I will. I'll make an effort for sure. But, you know, if I'm just like, you know, working on my computer, going to the gym, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be doing that. Right. So, but having, having something figured out and building that, like just a little bag of tricks that you can like just pull out and just not even think about yes. that and just taking a little bit of time at the beginning. I think it's like anything when you understand why you know, or, you know, and how, when you have the understanding that like, all the stuff you've just taught yeah. us, you know, that we, you know, we have like, you know, we are, all we need is five colors and, <laughs> you know, and how to go about figuring that out. It's just super useful. Now we have another tool. So thank you, darling. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I, I recommend if you got really excited about the, the lip thing, go take that lipstick masterclass. Yeah. Absolutely. Re-inspire you on, you know, because even just, just choosing a shade that is right for camera, and that's, you were talking about people or, you know, some people makeup is their thing. Even people that makeup is their thing, makeup for camera is a totally different thing. Yeah, true. So yeah. everyday makeup does not, is not the same as makeup that mm. translates well on camera. Okay. And so that so i almost when people tell me like i'm not a big makeup person i don't really know anything i want to be like good good because then you don't have to unlearn yeah, some yeah. things the point is is that we do things that we just don't even know where we pick this up from we don't even know we don't even know yeah we're doing it wrong because it's the way we've always done it yeah. and yeah, there are funny. some little tweaks that it's like there is a better way to do this and it can make a world of difference yeah on screen and ultimately on you know your your energy your, your perceived energy your vibrancy your you yeah. know, dynamic look um so fun. but that class is really fun the lipstick master class is really fun and i also have if you if you are like kind of like oh gosh how long have i been hanging on to my makeup i need to replace some things I, I also have a guide it's on my website it's called the ultimate makeup makeover mm -hmm. And it will walk you through how to audit your collection. There's a placement key for the five must-have colors. Um, and it'll be like a makeup schedule. So you'll know like, when, how often do I have to replace my lipstick? How often should I be replacing my yeah. stuff? No, that's awesome. That's so useful. I mean, like, I wouldn't even thought of it. I'm like, when it starts to get clumpy, I don't know, you know. Um. <laughs> This is so good. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Selena. This is awesome. I love, I love the community that you're forming 
cure. I, I just, I know that, you know, yes, you know, under the banner of like, you know, we're all in business and, you know, we're all moving our brands forward, but taking us out of the isolation of both being an entrepreneur and being a mom, mm -hmm. which can be just both are very isolating seasons. Yeah. And so for you to bring us all together to just encourage and support and learn from each other is a beautiful thing. So thank you for saying that. Darling. I really, Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I am so excited. And I think that, you know, you know, I started this a few months ago, you know, because of not having any community in my you know, for seven years. And I felt so lonely. And then kind of, um, we moved to Vegas to be part of an entrepreneurial um, community. That was kind of my first taste, literally, you know, I didn't know other one other single mom or business owner. I didn't at all. And then we moved here and it was like this, you know, it was kind of like, it was just eye opening. And there was a, a, a school as part of it, which is amazing because, you know, it's, it's a great place to meet pe like minded people. And uh, um, I just think it's a game changer. You know, it's just so, Im you, you realize how important, you know, being around other, other mums, you know, it's like, we don't have to choose. We don't have to be a mum or run and own a business that we love. We can do both and we can do it without losing our minds, right? We can do it without running ourselves into the ground because that's what I did the first time. And it's just... It's, there's just no need to do that. And if we can also help each other, support each other's businesses and like, you know, higher within, right? So, you know, obviously supporting each other's businesses is, is amazing. And that's one way, but like for the other person, I need a, you know, a copywriter. Well, where do I say, you know, I could spend hours. It's so overwhelming. I yeah. could spend hours and yeah. hours Googling, researching, you know, whatever. or I could come in here and support another awesome. And it's taken the stress away from me and it yeah. supports somebody else. So I just like, I'm just super excited. And I think that this, that doing this, the mini trainings is a great yeah. way for everybody to kind of get yeah. to know each other, what they do and, you know get a feel for who they are so yeah i'm i'm just super excited that you have such a lovely energy i i love talking to you you just have such a just a positive you know just a beautiful energy so thank you um and thank you for teaching us you know all this and if anybody wants to know more and about the, the lipstick um training or anything selena let people know i'm sure we'll get to chat uh, more soon yeah. but thank you so much thanks for joining everybody yeah. Yeah.